Hi everyone, Daisy here for another video and today's video is going to be talking all about Kobe ink. I'm really excited to tell everybody all about these Kobe inks which we've been talking so much about and to introduce a little bit of the backstory on them. We are really excited to share that here at Yoseka we have been working directly with Nagasawa to bring over the complete collection of their inks. Many of you might already know Kobe inks because they are available here in the US, but it's just a small fraction of their complete collection of inks that are available here. And recently we actually introduced the complete collection of over 80 colors of individual ink colors in their ink bottles here. And um, so I thought I would do a little bit about Kobe Inks and Nagasawa, which is the stationery store in Japan that makes Kobe Inks. So Kobe Inks are actually, the full name is Kobe Ink Story. And in Japanese, they're referred to as Kobe Ink Monogatari. It is a collection of, as I was saying before, over 80 ink colors and they are made by Nagasawa, which is a stationery store in Japan that has been around for over 100 years. They were originally established in 1882, so about 140 year old stationery store, which is crazy mind blowing if you think about it. I know that in Japan, there's lots of stores and sort of like crafts artisans that have been doing what they're doing for over 100 years and where I'm, I'm super honored to be working with Nagasawa and to be able to bring these inks over to the US and kind of tell their story here and how perfect that they're called Kobe Ink Story. So Nagasawa is a fifth generation stationery store run by the different members of the Nagasawa family. I think it's, it's the fifth generation today, but they're actually produced or manufactured by uh, Sailor, which is why they come in these bottles, these round 50 milliliter bottles that may seem familiar to you if you've ever gotten a Sailor Gentle bottle of ink before they were discontinued. They used to be in these 50 milliliter round bottles too. And today these bottles are um, only seen on the Kobe inks, but that is that is why. Um, so Sailor produces and manufactures these Kobe inks for Nagasawa, just like Sailor actually produces and manufactures a lot of Nagasawa's fountain pens, such as their Proske fountain pens. Uh, you won't see the Sailor branding on them, but they are actually a Sailor nib, a Sailor resin body. It's all Sailor, just like this is Sailor made, but it's actually Nagasawa ink. So it's a little confusing, but I thought I would give a little bit of an explanation why you sometimes see Sailor thrown into the mix when you hear about Kobe inks. The story behind these Kobe ink monogatari is actually they were developed by Nagasawa back in 2007. So today they are over 15 years old. This, this collection of inks is over 15 years old. And the sort of origin story of the Kobe inks is that the person who created them, his name is Takeuchi, Naoyuki Takeuchi, who is the manager of product development today at Kobe or at, <laughs> at Nagasawa. And it's really interesting because he's actually been working for Nagasawa since he was a college student and he grew up in Kobe. So he obviously has this like deep connection to the city of Kobe and the stationery store of Nagasawa. He grew up working in the stationery store and then later on came to be the manager at the stationery store. But how these inks in particular came to be was actually as a result of sort of a tragedy in the area of Kobe. So back in 1995, uh, Kobe had this like devastating earthquake where a lot of the buildings were completely destroyed and Nagasawa's stationery store was also really affected and just pretty much in shambles after the earthquake. And Takeuchi was in the middle of helping to rebuild and it took 
took many, many years. They lost a lot of their records. So actually, if they look back on like the 1800s and things like that, they don't have those records anymore because of this devastating earthquake. So since 1995, Nagasawa was trying to rebuild their store, get their, um, get their records back together. I'm sure they were having to order and ship in a lot of new things, obviously, even with like the building infrastructure, literally rebuilding that. And Takeuchi tells a story of how he was commuting back and forth every day to work. And he, it was just like the infrastructure was all messed up and he was on his bike and just kind of in the nature of Kobe and really struck by the beauty of colors of Kobe. And so years later, after rebuilding Nagasawa, Takeuchi sat down to write a letter to one of the Nagasawa partners that were instrumental in helping Nagasawa rebuild their stationery store after the earthquake. And he sat down to write this letter with a fountain pen and at the time, the only colors that this was back before 2007, the only colors that were really available in fountain pen inks back then were kind of boring colors, black, blues, reds, um, blue blacks. So that is how Takeuchi got the idea to create a full collection of colors that were more interesting. And also he wanted to be able to really articulate his passion for Kobe and his appreciation for rebuilding Kobe and specifically Nagasawa. And he wanted to be able to write the letter in the colors of Kobe. And that is how Kobe Ink Story Inks really came to be. So back in 2007, Takeuchi uh, worked on developing three colors. So this full collection of 82 colors actually grew from just three colors. It was only meant to be three colors. And the first three colors were a green, a brown, and a blue, like a, like a lighter blue color. And those are the number one, number two, and number three of the Kobe inks. And that is what Takeuchi really sought out to do is create sort of off black, off blue, off blue black colors that people could write with in their fountain pens and have these colors be something that he could use to remind people of the beauty of Kobe. That is a little bit of the story behind Kobe inks. Of course, in the years after that, um, since 2007, we see lots of other fountain pen companies, actually Iroshizuku, Pilots Iroshizuku, is also dated back to 2007. So I'm guessing Pilot had a similar idea around that time to introduce different colors of ink to a fountain pen users. And since then, Sailor has obviously began their Sailor Gentle lines, their Sailor Shikiori lines, which date to um, a little bit later than that. And their Sailor Ink Studio lines, of course, is a color, a, a collection of 100 different colors of fountain pen ink. But Back when these Kobe inks were first starting in 2007, there weren't really a lot of different fountain pen ink colors that you could write in. And that is what the Kobe inks kind of wanted to do is give people more interesting colors of ink to be able to write in. After 2007, the collection of Kobe inks steadily grew by a few colors over every year and 15 years later, we now have a collection of 82 colors of ink. And Kobe Ink also makes lots of different sort of exclusives and limited editions to celebrate. Um, they partner with lots of museums specifically in Kobe to celebrate openings and um, exciting events that they have going on in Kobe. And they also work with some retail stores internationally as well. So there are even beyond the 82 colors, you do see some more limited edition Kobe ink colors that are made in collaboration with Kobe ink and another store, another business, another retail shop, another museum. Um, so you will see those as well in case you're wondering. So let's take a close up look at the Kobe ink bottle and what that might look like uh, when you get one. They have some pretty cool details on them. On the Kobe ink packaging, you get, it's uh, it comes in this kind of very rectangular square uh, package. And this is an illustration of just like a line drawing of the skyline of Kobe. 
And this is the Kobe Port Tower, which is a very iconic building. It is red, actually. And this is something that really stands out on all of our Kobe ink boxes. And then on the top of the box, it's box itself, there's a little sticker label indicating what number. So this one is obviously number 77, which is called Roko Himalayan Blue. And this says Kobe Ink Monogatari, which means story. So Kobe Ink Story, telling the story of Kobe through all of these different ink colors. When you open this box up, the bottle itself looks like this. So it's a really interesting design. It has that same Kobe skyline on there with the super iconic Kobe uh, port tower. What's fascinating and a little bit confusing, <laughs> a little bit confusing for us about these bottles is that there's actually no um, there's no identifier of the ink name or the ink color once you get the bottle itself. If we take a look here, we do see a color swatch over here, so we know it's a green ink, but there's no number and there's no, at least in English, there's no um, indicator of what this, of what this bottle is could be. So it can get a little confusing, so it might be helpful. We often indicate, uh, label the bottle caps over here. Another interesting detail about these Kobe inks is that all of the labels are actually slightly different. So there's a swatch for the color of the ink. So we know that this is an orange ink and we know that this is a green ink. This one is a blue ink, but they, the part of the, the, where the color is shaded in is actually different for the different bottles of ink, depending on what has inspired this color of ink. So this one, for example, is inspired by mountains. So we have the curvature of a mountain. This one is inspired by some water. So we have like, it looks like the sea. This one is inspired by a building, so a building color. So it's kind of like it's neither, neither the mountains nor the sea, but they have like an abstract indicator over here of what that is. And then of course we have the Japanese name of the ink. If anyone can read Japanese, that is super helpful for you to have. Then I do have um, a limited edition bottle of a Kobe ink that was actually gifted to me by Authen. Um, and this is just to show everyone that they do make sort of special edition, limited edition inks with uh, Kobe that they, they make with lots of different stores around the world. So this one here is a Taiwan Alisan Green, and it's inspired by this really famous forest in uh, it for, forest on a mountain in Taiwan. So it's a green ink, and they do have this like really beautiful packaging here. So in case you ever see a bottle or a box packaged like a Kobe ink, but not quite Kobe ink, <laughs> that is what that is. They do make these limited edition collaborations. So I thought today I would share some of our favorite colors because we do have all of the colors swatched out by Alex. I'll show everyone. Um, so this is a little stack of color swatches that were produced that were made for us by Alex. She spent a lot of time on these. So I'm not gonna go in and show all 82 colors, but I thought I would pick out some of the most interesting colors in my research that I read about and where you can really see a color has been inspired by one specific part of the city of Kobe or maybe something that had a really interesting backstory to it or just a color that I personally love to write with. So here are a handful of Kobe inks that have really interesting stories that we love. So um, this one is number one, Roko Green. This one is really interesting because it is one of the the first three, which are right here. We have number one, Roko Green, number two, Hatoba Pure Blue, and number three, Kyukyoruchi Sepia. 
So these are actually the original three Kobe inks that were first released by Take Uchi back in 2007 when he sought out to create his complete collection of inks for Nagasawa. And the Roko Green is actually inspired by um, a famous mountain in Kobe called Mount Roko. And it's covered with greenery, covered with trees. And in the aftermath of the earthquake, a lot of the buildings were really destroyed. So the mountain and the landscape really stuck out every day as something that Bull back in Kobe would look at every day. And so this was the story behind the Roko Green and how that came to be. It was really just like something that Takeuchi saw every single day as he was working, going to work on his commute. And it was a color that was not black, not blue, not blue black that he wanted to write in because it was something different and that it was something that reminded him of Kobe. The next color is number two, Hatoba Pure Blue. I, it's crazy how much we can learn about the city of Kobe just through these ink colors. Even before my research, I think it would be it would be funny if I ever met somebody from Kobe because I would be able to probably recite all of these things just from reading the different ink names. And so knowing, knowing that there were like lots of blues and lots of words like port and pier, um, Kobe, is a port city in, in Japan. It's one of the biggest port cities and it has a long history tied to that. So a lot of the inks that you'll see in this collection have to do with the water um, and have to do with uh, the sea. Um, so there's lots of beautiful blues and greens because of that. And this is the first blue that debuted in the Kobe ink collection. It's Hatoba Pure Blue and it's inspired by the colors of the sea meeting the sky. So it's this really beautiful blue that's not quite not quite like a boring blue black that um, you would find in lots of other inks back in 2007 before these inks were created. Then we have number three, which is like a really rich deep brown and it's a Kyukyo Ryuchi Sepia, which is actually inspired by, there's an old city portion of Kobe where a lot of the old importers, a lot of the foreigners would live in these like westernized houses. And this color is inspired by the wood that was in those houses. So I thought that was really interesting. Then we have, of their number four Ijinkan Red, which is inspired by the brick, the brick exterior of this really famous uh, house that an importer lived in in the old city portion of Kobe back when they were doing a lot of importing since they were a port city. The Westerners would come in and build these very different looking, like aesthetically very different looking houses. And this is inspired by the brick exterior of that house. Next up with a really interesting story is number eight, Arima Amber. As you can see, it's this rusty orange color. And this I was fascinated by. Um, according to some research that I did, um, Arima is a famous part of Kobe where there's lots of onsen or hot springs and they have a special quality to their water in the onsen, which is that it's really, really high in iron and really high in salt. So people would just like bathe in the, in the hot springs just to relax and it has like health benefits. But one of the unique things about the water in the Arima onsen is that it's it's high in iron, so it actually is this rusty color. The color of this hot springs are actually exactly like this Arima Amber ink, and it's a beautiful color of ink, and it's really popular in store, and I just thought it was fascinating that the color of the water is exactly the color of this ink, and it's beautiful. Then we have number 16, Nada Brown. Nada is a region in Kobe where they had a lot of sake breweries, and a lot of them are traditional sake breweries that have um, wooden vats instead of like the steel vats that we often see today for at wineries, at beer breweries. These are large wooden tubs where they use to uh, make sake. And so all of this wood has inspired this not a brown color. It's like a really rich wooden brown color. Taisanji yellow is inspired by like wheat fields. I just, this is definitely one of um, the more popular yellows that we see a lot of, a lot of yellow, lovers or people who are just like looking for like an interesting yellow color who that's actually legible. This is like a nice one because it's a little bit 
brown. It's a little bit darker than just like a sunny yellow. So it's very legible and it has sort of like a vintage quality to it. So a lot of people might like this in like a nice brass fountain pen or a fountain pen that has an antique quality to it. This would be beautiful in. This is number 44 Sumaura Seaside Blue, which is one of the more popular teal colors. And Austin actually just inked up a pen with this recently and he loves teal. So I'll take his, I'll take his, uh, I'll trust his judgment on this. So this is inspired by water, as we were saying before, um, lots of water in the port city of Kobe and Suma is a creek where lots of people visit in the summer. And this, I just thought this blue was really pretty. It's like a teal. Another really vibrant blue um, inspired by like a shopping district in a shopping street in Kobe. It's like this very vibrant, vivid, blue, almost like a sky blue, but not a blue that we see all the time, I feel like. So I thought I would share this one. Number 54 is definitely one of the most popular Kobe ink colors that we have. It is Mount Goshiki Ochre or Goshiki Yama Ochre. And it is inspired by sort of the, uh, the color of the artifacts found in a tomb that is a visiting place in Kobe. I will say I looked up the photos of the tomb and um, you know, it's not, some of these, some of these colors are like mind blown. The color of the ink is exactly the color of whatever they're trying to emulate. And some of them are a little bit off and they're a little bit, they're not as direct interpretations. This one is not as direct um, because the color of the tomb itself is obviously like more yellow. The color of the artifacts are obviously more brown. <laughs> but um, I, I will say that this like peachy pink color happens to be super popular in store. People love the look of this color and love to think of it as like an artifact associated color. And it definitely does kind of have sort of vintage vibes to it. The last color that we're sharing is number 57, which is Kobe Hime Ajisai. This color had a really interesting backstory and it also is one of the most popular Kobe inks. This is Ajisai means hydrangea in Japanese and the hydrangea flower is the symbolic flower of Kobe. This ink is inspired by hydrangea flowers and it has incredible shading properties. It shades blue, it shades purple, it shades pink, which is exactly that color of hydrangea flowers that you can't pin down because they are, they are multicolored. They are they're shading flowers, essentially. So um, I just thought this color was so perfectly matched for hydrangea flowers. I love it every time I use it. And according to my research, Takeichi actually spent eight years developing this color because he wanted to get the flower color right. It is like this really important flower to the city of Kobe. And it's also a hard color to capture. So I think he did a really amazing job with this color. As you can see, there is shading and it really is all of these colors of hydrangeas. It's blue, it's purple, it's pink. I guess it's not green, but maybe that's not the type of hydrangea that Kobe has, um, but it is really, it, it does truly remind me of hydrangea flowers every time I see this the same color. And that is about it um, for some of our, choosing some of our favorite and most interesting Kobe inks. It is a full collection of 82 ink colors. So there's tons more colors than this. And I had a hard time narrowing it down to just this handful of ink colors, but I thought that these had some really interesting backstories to share too. So I do hope you would all enjoyed hearing about the backstories and the explanations behind some of these beautiful colors from Nagasawa's Kobe Ink Story collection. If you're interested to see more Kobe Ink colors, be sure to check out our Swatch with Yoseka video where Alex swatched all 82 colors. So you can watch that for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> be sure to check that out if you want to see close-ups of all 82 Nagasawa Ink Story colors. For today's video, that's about it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what you think of these Nagasawa Kobe Ink Story ink colors and which ones are your favorites. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.